Hello, it's Scott Manley here with a short video about my latest attempts to photograph the International Space Station using a consumer-grade camera. For me, the gold standard of amateur satellite photography are people like Thierry Legault, who actually was able to photograph astronauts on a spacewalk. But his equipment is pretty big and fancy, and I just want to do it using a camera that I can buy in the store. In the past, I've been able to use high zoom cameras like my Sony RX10 to photograph the space station passing in front of the sun. The nice thing about these predictions is you know exactly where to point the camera and what time and because it's in front of the sun, you have a lot of light. So you can use very short shutter times. Now, since then, my RX10 was stolen and I replaced it with a Nikon P1000, which is a monster camera that offers a zoom of up to 125 times. And I've been using this for the last few months. This is uh, the International Space Station flying by the moon in daylight. I was able to see it in daylight because I knew where it would be thanks to the wonders of orbital mechanics, right? One big mistake I made with this image was to use the moon setting, which meant the exposure time was sufficiently long that the space station is actually blurred out along its orbit. So last night I was expecting a space station pass that was literally right overhead, like 89 degree azimuth. That would be the closest it would be and therefore the best chance to get a good photo. But there was no moon or anything that it would pass near. In fact, the stars would be very hard to see because it was so close after sunset. So instead of pointing the camera at a fixed known object, waiting for it to pass by, I put a finder scope on my camera and hoped to basically hand hold this camera and keep it on the satellite as best I could. Just before the pass, I put the camera on a tripod, pointed it at Venus, set up the focus, set up the exposure, used the shortest shutter possible. And the camera, you do not rely on autofocus. And this is me hand holding it after I took it off the stand, pointing it at Venus using the sight. It's terrible, but it is zoomed in to cover less than half of a degree on the sky. And so now I had to do this with the space station, and this is the video I got, and it's even harder. I, obviously, tracking a moving object is not the easiest thing, especially when it gets very high in the sky. Most of the time, I'm not even pointing the camera at the sky, but in the brief moments where it passes through the field of view, you're getting 30 frames per second at 4K. And that actually is enough to start building serious images from. This is one small section, one frame at a time, and you can see there is something vaguely space station-like there. So now I can use a video pan and crop tool to keep the space station in the center using a sliding window, and that removes all the wobble from my old man hands, just leaves the wobble of the atmosphere. And if ever I'm going to do this again, I'm going to find a spot where the air is a whole lot less turbulent. I was standing on the back deck of my house, which is probably the worst place possible since I'm looking over a roof which has been warmed during the sun and the sun has just set. So the air is really messy. These are all the frames that I got, all cut to the same frame size and stabilized. So this is how the thing progresses during the pass. You can see it's at this point is totally unrecognizable. I haven't adjusted the focus or anything on it. That's just the atmosphere. But then the air sort of cleans up and we start to get some really good images in here. You can start to see recognizable features on the space station here, which is really cool. I know it looks terrible, but you got to remember, this is a handheld shot of an object that's moving at 5 miles a second straight overhead, 250 miles away, and traveling through a lot of dirty air. You'll notice, by the way, that the space station flipped around, and that's because, of course, it came overhead and I had to turn around, so the camera rotated. So just for quick reference, this is what the space station probably looks like, except that I was viewing it from below, and the solar panels would have been angled towards the left side because that's where the sun was. And so if we look at my images, we can sort of see the truss structure running horizontally and the main backbone running vertically. At the top, you can see the T shape where you've got the Japanese module on one side and the European module on the left side. It's longer on the Japanese side because they have the experimental platform. Running vertically either side of the main modules, you can see two radiators. On the left one, it's wide and flat and grey because it's angled so that it doesn't catch the sun. The one on the left is really bright and I'm guessing it's angled so that we can see it in the sunlight. 
There were only two spacecraft docked to the station at this time, a Progress and a Soyuz, and it seems like you might be able to see docked spacecraft if they're docked, uh, depending where they're docked. Now, as it went away from me and got lower in the sky, there were very fewer images, but you can see the solar panels in some of these as they had been angled to catch the light. So I am really impressed with what I got. I mean, this is totally unguided, handheld. The only concession is that I added a sight, and I was able to get images like this that show out the layout of the space station. I'm seriously thinking about getting a proper mount that can track satellites, and the only downside is I'm not going to get a space station pass as good as this for a while. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.